It's not enough that the government recognizes private property. It's not enough that the government protects private property. It's a system in which all property is private property. That is, that all the means of production, all the land, and whatever you produce, whatever you create, is yours. It's not the state's. And the state has no claim against it. So capitalism is that political system in which the government's sole responsibility is the protection of individual rights. Right? Individual rights. It's capitalism is the political system of freedom. It's a political system in which individuals are free, free from coercion, free of force, free to pursue their lives, to pursue the values that they rationally believe are necessary for their lives. It's really important to emphasize that capitalism is the system of freedom. Capitalism is the system where force is banned, outlawed, excluded. And force is banned even to the majority, even to people who would vote to use it. Voting doesn't supersede rights. Rights are inalienable. So, capitalism is the system of freedom. The freedom of action, the freedom to pursue values. It's not a system that guarantees you anything other than that you can act free of coercion, that you can live in pursuit of your own happiness. You can live in pursuit of your own values. And importantly, because of that, capitalism is a system in which the government is separated from your life. The government is whole focus, only focus, is on protecting you, not telling you how, what to do, and not laying claim over what you produce and what you create and what you own. So capitalism is a system that, system that demands the separation of state, of government, from economics. It's a system where the government has no say in your actions, including in your economic actions, unless you have used force against another human being, and here I include fraud as force. So it is a system of complete freedom. You can pursue any value, and as long as you're not, using force to interfere with the pursuit of other, other people's pursuit of their values, you are to be left alone. And importantly, capitalism is a system that rewards the rational pursuit of values. It rewards those people who are rational, who are productive, who are creative, who are builders, who are makers. And in that sense, capitalism is a system of justice. To the extent that you actually build, produce, and then can trade with others for their own benefit. Not trade to them as exploitation, but trade as win-win, which is what the essence of trade is. Then you are rewarded for that. Not rewarded by some central authority, not rewarded by some committee, not rewarded by something external, but you're rewarded by your very existence, by, by, by the very nature of the action. You are better off. It's win-win, which means you win. It's a system of justice in which those who produce, those who create, those who create values benefit. And the more value you create, the more you benefit. 
You know, you've often heard me probably, if you've listened to my talks, you've, you've often heard me talk about, you know, how do you become a billionaire? And the fact that in order to become a billionaire, one has to create enormous value for large numbers of people and do it at a price where you can make a profit. And if you can do that over and over again and sell whatever product you have to hundreds of millions of people over and over again, you're going to be a billionaire. But that's only because you produced immense value. You produced immense value that benefits hundreds of millions of people through a mutual trade, through win-win relationships. So, again, the focus on capitalism is on the freedom, your rights being protected, with rights are freedoms of action, on the win-win nature of the transactions, of the interaction, the voluntary nature of that interaction, because we're all free. It's all voluntary. Who you employ how much you pay for them, how much they're willing to take, what you sell, at what price, who buys, all of that is voluntary. That's the essential characteristic of a free society. Right? That's what freedom means. The, the interactions are not caused. So, That is kind of the, 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 the political system, the social system perspective on it. And it, it, in some sense, from a moral perspective, there's a perspective that many people take that that's all you need. But I think you also need to understand how such a system works economically. And a, the essential characteristic of the system economically is that it allows great producers to produce, to create, to build. And it rewards them to do that. And when somebody produces, creates something that is no good, it punishes them for doing that. And it punishes them on multiple levels. And the reward is on multiple levels. I'll give you a quick example. If you produce a product that, let's say you have a startup and uh, you produce something and the market likes it, you sell a lot of it, then not only are you gaining revenue from the, from the people buying your product, but the markets, banks, financial markets look at you and say, oh, he produced something of value. People are buying it. There is real potential in the future here. We're going to lend him money. We're going to buy a stock. We're going to provide him with capital. So what you get here is an ongoing circle. As long as you're producing quality products, quality based on the fact that people are willing to buy them, and you can produce a profit through that. They're willing to buy them at the price higher than what it costs you to produce. Then... You can raise more capital, grow the business, produce more and more. But if you slip, if suddenly your product is shoddy and people are not willing to buy it, or, and it, it's quite possible, a competitor arises that produces something better than yours, produces something more efficient, more productive, cheaper, better, by any dimension, suddenly you don't have that revenue. Suddenly your market shrinks. And unless you can convince the financial markets, the banks, the capitalists, that this is a fluke and you can fix everything and everything will be fine and, and you've got a plan and here's the plan and you can concretize that plan and make it real to them, then that source of capital will dry up and ultimately you will go out of business. But again, this is an act of justice. Right? You make money when your product is a value to people and you lose money when your product is, for whatever reason, 
your fault or not your fault, not a value to them anymore. And essentially, you know, that's the essential characteristic of a capitalist economy. The essential characteristic of a capitalist economy is the production of values. And what determines if it's a value are the consumers. And the whole, if you, if you, if you look at how businesses are created and what, you know, how they grow and, and, uh, and how they evolve, a key feature of that is the role of what we call capital, is the role of people who finance your company. You can't start a company without financing. You can't grow a company without financing. So the gatekeepers, the allocators of capital, the, the determiners of who is successful and who is a failure are the financial markets and institutions, and I've written and spoken a lot about this. And they both reward those who are successful, and they're very good and very quick at penalizing those who are not, and reshuffling and reorganizing and reorienting an economy or a business or an industry. And again, all consistent with voluntary interaction. The financier doesn't owe you anything. You don't owe the financier anything unless you have a contract. And the reason we have contracts is because many of these transactions that occur are long-term transactions. They're not instantaneous. It's not me just selling you something, you providing me with the cash. Even there, there is an implicit contract that what I advertise you're actually getting. But real detailed long contracts are required because most transactions under capitalism happen over time. And they're entered in, again, voluntarily. They're entered in for mutual benefit. They're entered in as a trade. So you've got the creation of value at the heart of everything. And to be successful in any point, you have to be a value creator. At the end of the day, even to consume, you have to have created some value so you can trade to get the product that you are going to consume. There is no free lunch. There is no free anything. There's production everywhere you look. Production of what? Production of values. Values to whom? Values for the people who will ultimately consume the product. And that is true across the entire supply chain. It's true in every single dimension. Now note that nowhere on planet Earth do we have a system like this. Nowhere on planet Earth do we actually have a system of freedom. Nowhere on planet Earth do we actually have a system in which individuals can voluntarily exchange value for value. Every economy in the world it's controlled, regulated, taxed to some extent or another at every step of every transaction. What we live in today is a mixed economy where people think capitalism is alive because there's some private property. But even the private property we have is to some extent an illusion. I mean, we have the private property, but... Our ability to keep it is an illusion. I mean, try not pay, paying your property taxes on your home. Suddenly, the home is taken from you. You're renting the home, in a sense, from the government. You're paying rent. It's called property tax. That's not capitalism. Capitalism is the government has no claim against you. There cannot be property tax and real freedom. Or your income. You work to produce a value as a businessman or as a worker or as anybody in the whole chain, in a chain of production. And 20%, 30%, 50%, 55% of it is taken from you. Taken from you by force. Try not paying your taxes. See what happens. In other words, you are gaining property, your wage in this case, by permission. And only, only on the condition 
You can work and you can gain a living and you can make a living and you can gain some income only on the condition that 50% of it gets taken away from you. And if you're not willing to do that, then you cannot work or you are in jail. And you can't pay your employees what you want, particularly at the low end. There's such things as minimum wages. You can't pay your CEO what you want. There are all kinds of ways in which taxes impact how much we pay the people at the top. And you can't do just straight contracts because every aspect of everything that you do is regulated to some extent or another. So capitalism today does not exist. There are features of capitalism. There are elements of capitalism. There's the kind of the pseudo belief that we have property rights, which exists everywhere. Even in China, people think they own the stuff that they own until the cupboard comes and takes it away from them. In the United States, we have more of a process by which the government takes our property away from us, but it still takes our property away from us. In China, you don't vote. Here you vote. But the differences in fundamental terms uh, do not exist in both systems. You are not free. You do not have capitalism. What we have is, is a variety of different forms of mixed economies, some that tax more, some that tax less, some that regulate more, some that regulate less, some that allow you to vote, some that don't allow you to vote, some that offend you and oppress you at the federal level, at the state level, at the local level. But note that Rights are violated at every single level. Capitalism is not just a system in which the federal government keeps its hands off of you, but it's a system of, gov it's a system of government in which all branches and aspects of government keep their hands off of you. It's a political, social, economic system where you are free to, to exercise your rights, which means your freedoms of action, your freedoms of of action to pursue the rational values necessary for your happiness, free of coercion, free of force. And that doesn't exist, and nothing close to it exists. So when we defend capitalism, we need to be very clear that what exists today is not capitalism. But, because when you do that, the, the, the immediate comment that you get is, well, the socialists also say there's, no cow, there's, no, there's never been socialism. Uh, then how can you judge? How can you judge whether the system is good or bad? Well, first you can judge <coughs> philosophically and morally. Is the system in which people are free to pursue their own values better than a system in which people are told which values they can pursue and how. Is a system of force or a system of freedom better? Now, a lot of people don't really get at that and don't really think about things on the principled level. But what about examples? And people want examples and people like examples. And examples are important. I think you have to know if you're going to advocate for capitalism, you have to know something about economics. You have to know something about history. You have to know something about examples. And this is the thing about the difference between socialism and capitalism in terms of, but there's never been the perfect system, right, that the socialists always tell you. Capitalism, to the extent that it is tried, to the extent that it is tried, to the extent that we have private property, to the extent that we have freedom, to the extent that the government stays away from market transactions, to the extent that markets are left free to function. To that extent, one, people are free to pursue their own values, and the results are massive economic success. Massive economic success. The results are, from a wealth perspective, overwhelming. The more freedom you have, the more elements of capitalism you have in an economy, the better it does. 
I mean, you can show empirical study after empirical study after empirical study that shows exactly that. And the opposite is true of socialism. The more you have the state owning the means of production, or controlling the means of production, or regulating the means of production, or taxing the means of production, the more consistently that is applied, the poorer the country is, the more violent it is, the more destructive it is. And the less free people are, by definition, and there's no accident that those are the countries that end up with gulags or concentration camps. So even when you look at degrees, capitalism is, shines in comparison to any other political economic system. In particular, as compared to social, socialism. So degrees matter. You'd rather be a little bit more free than a little bit less free. You'd have, rather have more elements of capitalism than less. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. It, all it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. Not sure when the next...